Senator Suzanne Collins just went full Karen after she discovered a message written in chalk on the public sidewalk outside of her house. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Banger police responded to a call from West Broadway at 9.20 p.m. Saturday to investigate a message written on chalk on the sidewalk. This is according to Banger Police spokesperson Wade Betters. The message, according to police, uh, police I'm going to show you the message. Very, very, very scary stuff that happened in front of Suzanne Collins' house. Oh, my God. For those of you who find that difficult to read, it says, Susie, please, Mainers want WHPA. Vote yes. Clean up your mess. WHPA refers to the Women's Health Protection Act, which would codify the right to an abortion in the law and ban restrictions on abortion access. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, oh, oh, how, how incredibly threatening this message is. I must call the police. How dare they write this in sidewalk chalk? Give me a break. Yeah, clearly terrorists. We need to come down to the full force of the law on these sidewalk chalk terrorists. No, even the, look, even the cops were like, hmm, th this is a quote here from Wade Betters. The message was not overtly threatening. Yeah, it wasn't threatening at all. It was, it was very polite. That's what it was. Susie, please protect women's rights. But no, no, she had to go full Karen and call the cops. I, uh, and by the way, here's what Collins said in a statement. We are grateful to the Bangor police officers and the city public works employee who responded to the defacement of public property in front of our home. Defacement. That's nothing a hose can't fix, okay? It's sidewalk chalk. I, I mean, come on. Really? Really? How? And, and by the way, for the message, how dare they ask something the great and powerful Suzanne Collins? No, no, you, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. How dare you ask her to do something for you? What are you, a corporation? What, did you give her a check? No, if you didn't give her a check, then I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. Now, this follows the peaceful vigils being held outside of the house, the homes of the six conservative Supreme Court justices who are planning to gut reproductive rights for women, trans men, and non-binary individuals. Millions of people are going to be affected. And yes, it would lead to the criminalization of not only abortion in many different states, but certain contraception, it would also lead to uh, the criminalization of miscarriages. You have a, a, a different variation. Like you, you have different states that have set up different trigger laws. As soon as Roe is officially overturned, which it's not yet, but it will be, then these states' trigger laws kick into play. And, and again, they're all different to varying different degrees, more some more draconian than others. But 26 different states have these trigger laws in place. Over half the country, where you have significant restrictions on abortion. But no, the real extremists here, apparently, are the uh, peaceful protesters. That's, yep, the real extremists. I mean, look, any time, any time that, it, 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 that people challenge power, or even the comfort of a politician... That's when the media, the politicians, the blue check liberals on Twitter join up with conservatives to go, T -t 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 -t. how dare you? You're being so uncivil right now. Don't go to their house. Hold on. They're taking your civil rights away. And, and yet, you're going to talk about civility? You're going to talk about civility. No, no, it's past time to be civil. And now they're passing laws, by the way, Congresses to protect themselves 
and insulate themselves from this real righteous anger. The Senate unanimously passed a bill to fund more police for the SCOTUS members and their families. Think about that. Left-wing pro-choice protesters, they peacefully gather, they do a vigil, and what happens? Immediate ramping up of police presence. They also did the same thing in the largely peaceful George Floyd protest. 93% peaceful. Right-wingers never tell you that, by the way. When, when they talk about, oh, the, the, the riots, the riots, the George Floyd riots, oh, what about the riots? 93% peaceful. Millions and millions of people all over the country protesting peacefully. And they focus on the uh, very few times where there was violence, where there were where there were actual uh, riots, while ignoring the January 6th Capitol riots. And by the way, right-wingers, they constantly talk about insurrection. They talk about violence. They talk about taking out the Democrat. Again, talking about killing Nancy Pelosi. They have said that. They have talked about killing Gretchen Whitmer, Michigan, the governor. They have talked about hanging Mike Pence, the vice president or former vice president of the United States under Trump. So they talk about that. And what happened? January 6th, that happened. And guess what? They, they didn't think that any violence was going to happen at all. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, what, what do you mean? Uh, the right-wingers do violence. Uh, even though we have extensive records of right-wingers doing violence, we're not going to prepare for right-wingers doing violence. But when a left-winger protests a pipeline, oh, no, that affects capital. We can't. We have to come down full force, especially if they're indigenous people, very, very dangerous indigenous people protecting their water rights. Hmm. Weird. Why is it that people in power only seem to consider the left wing to be dangerous when it happens to be proven over and over again that it's the far right that's the danger? Why is it that the media always takes the side of protecting the powerful against the rest of us, against regular people? The Washington Post editorial board, earlier this morning, they put this tweet out. They said, the picket of Judge Home." A judge's home is problematic. Oh, it's problematic, everybody. It tries to bring direct public pressure to bear on a decision making process that must be controlled, evidence based, and rational if there is to be any hope of an independent judiciary. Th there is no independent judiciary. There hasn't been an independent judiciary for a very long time. How long? Ever since the court said that money is speech and corporations are people. It's a joke. The Supreme Court is a joke. It has been for a very long time. This decision is not rational at all. It, it upends 50 years of established precedent on reproductive rights, on privacy. Privacy. And this, again, you know what the worst thing is? Congress could have done something about it, but they chose not to. They chose not to. Suzanne Collins had voted against advancing the Women's Health Protection Act to the Senate floor for debate. She also supported the nomination, I'm sorry, the confirmations of Supreme Court Justices Brett Kavanaugh and Neil Gorsuch after they lied to everybody about their commitment to honoring precedent. And... She does not commit to overturning the Senate filibuster to even have a carve out to codify Roe v. Wade in federal law. I think it is very, very clear that we are not going to get any help from Congress. And I need you to understand Congress is not on our side. Democratic politicians are not on your side. They're using this to fundraise and but will never do a goddamn thing to help you retain your rights, your right to privacy, because this is not a priority to them. No, their priority is, is the donors. It, it's all about making money. They're not affected by this. 
No, Nancy Pelosi and the Democratic establishment, Jim Plyber and Steny Hoyer, that's why they're out there pushing anti-choice candidates like Henry Cuellar in Texas over pro-choice progressives like Jessica Cisneros. They do not give a damn about you. And by the way, criticism extends to progressives as well. Bernie Sanders, you're in the Senate. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? J just sending this out the door. Unanimous consent. Bernie Sanders consented. Why did you vote for this? Very, very disappointing, Bernie Sanders. They did not need more police. But look, none of these people are going to be affected by this decision. So, of course, they're going to do nothing. But when people show up to protest for their rights, using their First Amendment rights, which are extensive peaceful protests, to make their voice heard, to demand a redress of their grievances, well, that makes the elites uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. And so they are showing us exactly what they prioritize. F. Suzanne Collins, F. Lisa Murkowski. And, and all the rest of the so-called alleged pro-choicers in Congress who won't do, do, a, uh, do a goddamn thing to protect bodily autonomy. No, we see you. We see exactly who you are. 